Hi there! <laughs> Hello and welcome back to part two of um, our lovely landscape, which is my photograph. I took it. Uh, well, actually, Mr. Fix it might have taken it. It was our photograph. You're very welcome to use it as a reference. You're very welcome to paint it and sell it. Uh, I don't need any, um, there is a word for it. Accreditation. Accreditation, thank you. Just use it as as you wish. Um, it's a it's a very nice photograph actually, considering it was taken uh, just with an iPhone. It's co it's it really has good composition. This one, it's got about a third of sky. It's got um, the far ground here, the middle ground, and and the foreground, and re and this lovely central water here which is perfect and actually it's not on the center it's just slightly off which makes it on this third it's a pretty good composition all round actually so i don't know how we managed that but we did um and there's plenty others to come in this series but what i've decided to do instead of i used to do um paintings and release two a week to youtube for you to follow along but what I've decided to do with this one is to do it every day at four o'clock UK time until we've finished the painting and then we'll work out if people liked it if people want to follow along if you you know want to join me every day or we'll, we'll fathom out what works best Paula says hi. hello Paula so she's on the ball today yeah you were on the ball last night you're mermaids fantastic and gorgeous Hello Jacqueline, I enjoyed talking to you yesterday and today. Um, if you haven't seen Paula's per Mermaid, let me just say it's over on Fairy Chic Emporium uh, and Paula did a live last night and there's another live coming up there on Thursday at one o'clock where she'll be finishing off her mermaid. It's It's the opposite end of the spectrum to what I do here, but I can appreciate that you will like both. I like both. I, you know, marvel at what Paula does, and this is what I do. I do the details, Paula does the glam. <laughs> so, um, so yeah, this is what we're up to. And yesterday we got as far as, I'll say blocking the sky, and it's certainly not finished. Um, we've got a moody looking sky up there which is fine. It was a moody looking sky. I need to get rid of some of this blue. I'm not liking it very much. And I'm not liking the marks that were made by the Deerfoot Stippler. They need to be sort of smoothed out. But I want to leave it as it is until we get some more of this in. And then I can get a feeling for what the sky really ought to look like. It's certainly grey, but I think there might be a bit more, not this blue, but it needs a bit more blue hue to it and yesterday we managed to get the sky done and we also managed to get this little far mountain done if you didn't see yesterday be wondering what on, how, on earth she's doing with this pink canvas well i painted it pink <laughs> on purpose it was a uh, it was a cheap canvas board from jackson's which made it quite rough so i sandpapered it down put one coat of gesso on um the golden the make golden gesso which is white um, let it dry sand it down again then i added some quinacridone magenta into the gesso and gave it a coat of that and then sanded it down again the reason being i think there's a lot of well i know there's a lot of green going on here and the complement of green is red i don't want to make it red that's too much so i made it pink so we might just get little hints of this coming through which will make the green pop you can actually see, I don't know if you can see it, but I can certainly see it even on here. There's a little bit of pink coming through and it really does add a bit of life, a bit of spice to the picture. So today, what I'm um, proposing to carry on with... Sharon says hi. Hi, Sharon. Nice of you to join me. Thank you. Um, what I'm proposing to do is this mountain here. Now, we've had a bit of deliberation, Mr. Fix-It, myself, as to what which mountain that could be. We think it might be Haystacks or, what's the other one? Great Gable. Great Gable. But Mr. Fix is going to get the Ordnance Survey maps out. 
after we finished and you will have a definitive answer as to what it is. Re the paints, etc. Everything is the same as I had yesterday, apart from the addition of phthalo green. Phthalo green is not my favourite colour. I, I, I'm not keen on it at all. But it is a green with a whole load of blue in it, which is what we need. Because if you remember yesterday, I was explaining to you that the further away from the viewer something is, the more bluey it is. And that's the atmosphere. There's more atmosphere between you and something distant as there is between you and something close. And so the atmosphere sends light off in all directions and we perceive it as as blue, as a blue haze. So um, the trees and vegetation that's on this next one here need to be bluey green, not just green. And I'll see when I've finished if I need to put a blue glaze over it like I did with this yesterday. Right, I think we're up to date, guys. So where to begin? Well, what I will say to you is, if you can't see it, don't paint it. For example, I know down here, these are trees. And I know that because it makes sense. My brain's telling me that's what it is. But I can't see them. Similarly, I know on trees there are branches and leaves, but I can't see them. So don't paint them. You know, don't get stuck in the minutiae of painting these as separate trees when we, we just can't make them out. It's an area of a bit of wooded area. Up above it we've got rocks, we've got what looks like it might just be the beginnings of heather to come out. I was saying yesterday as we were driving around we could see the purple of the heather just starting to come into the fells, um, which is never a good sign. It sort of heralds the end or towards the end of summer really. Um, but the, And in this section here, which is uh, green, it's pure green, I intend to do away with some of these ferns and uh, not such interesting vegetation and put some heather in there. And this pink gessoed canvas board will help me enormously with that. So time to crack on, let's break open the paint. So I'm gonna need some purple and the purple that I used yesterday was uh, out the tube purple. It's nearly abstract. Um, so I'll put some of that out. I'll put some black, I'll put some white. Um, if you weren't watching yesterday, you'll have missed me talking about this. It's Studio Lasau paint. It's relatively new paint to me. I have got a few colours in it. But I was reading all the bump about it. Um, and they do a titanium white, same as every other paint company. But they also do this crystal white. And they say in their bump that it is whiter than white, like personal white. <laughs> they don't say it's personal white, I just said that. Um, so I thought I'd invest in a pot of it and see what happened. And actually yesterday when we were doing the sky, it was really obvious that it is a very, very bright white. So I'm pleased with that. There's a link to that on the Miss Paint-A-Lot page at Jackson's if you want to get yourself some of that. Um, so right, so I've got purple, I'm going to put a little bit of black out, just a tiny bit, just to help with the rocks. I'm going to put a little bit of ordinary titanium white out. You don't need masses of anything really, it's not a huge area this. I'm going to put some of the olive green out that we had yesterday because I quite liked I quite liked it, um, particularly after it had been glazed. It was a really nice colour. I'm going to put some of this phthalo blue out. Hello, Carol. How are you today? Thank you for joining me. You can see that colour. It doesn't appeal to me at all. It's not my sort of thing. Um, that might be. I'll put some grey out. Never go wrong with grey, do you really? I've been playing with colouring pencils today. Well, yeah, coloured pencils, I think they call them in the fine art world. You wouldn't believe that coloured pencils could be fine art. Um, 
But if I ever get the hang of them, I'll show you. Karen says the Lord, sorry she's late. Oh, you're not late. We haven't even we haven't even picked up a brush in anger yet. We've just been rabbiting on about this, that, and the other. The water's still clean. Water's still clean. We've done that. So um, I'm going to get my quarter inch angle shader. I don't know what else I might need for this, but I'll get it as I go along. Oh, look at that! A brand new quarter inch angle shader. Ooh. Right. So let's have a good look at what we're what we're looking at. Um, so she'd very much like to see you clean brushes, but she just does. <laughs> Fortuitously. Or oh, do you mean you'd like to see me clean brushes? Who was it? No, Paula. Oh, Paula, there you go, very Paula. Much like to see your nice clean brushes. There you go. Immaculate. And all dried horizontally, like that, so the water doesn't run up into the ferrule. I'm really fastidious about my brushes. <laughs> That's just um uh, anyway look it's time to get some painting done. Enough with this. So let, well let's start at the top of this mountain and it comes it comes down. The other thing that I should say that is critically important is to know where your light source is. You can't really do much without knowing where your light source is. So it's coming from here. It's coming from kind of behind in here. And you can see that very clearly on this section, lights hitting here. And this is in the shadows. Similarly here, it's hitting here, where it's come down over the mountain. And you can see where it's hitting the water. So it's coming from this direction. This is all in shadow. So we don't want that too bright and giddy with itself. <laughs> so I'm just going to take a little bit of purple. I'm going to mix a little bit of black in through it. It's a bit too much. And the top of this um, mountain is rock, so we'll just put that in as a, as a purple. Now yesterday I missed putting this bit in here. For, well, I think we were all, we'd all had enough really, we were leaving. <laughs> Last one out shut the door type thing. Um, but it's alright because it's quite similar to... Uh, what's going on today. I'm just going to add a bit of grey to that to that purple grey down a bit. Yesterday uh, I greyed my purple down by adding raw sienna to it and I explained to you then that the purple and yellow are complements of each other, they're opposite each other on the colour wheel and if you add any two colours together that are opposite each other, red and green, blue and um, orange, add them together and they nullify each other. They become what's called a grey, although it's very often not a grey, it's often a brown. Um, but you talk about greying the colour out with the complement. So that's what I did yesterday. I used the raw sienna to grey the purple out. I've just added some grey to it today and I'll see if that does the trick. If not, we'll grey it out some more with the raw sienna, which is yellow enough to um, do the trick. I just need a slightly darker version of that and a slightly smaller brush. I think this was a brush I was using yesterday. Um, so this here is nice and I'll just add a bit of grey to it. And just put that little bit of that mountain in that I missed yesterday. That's fine, I might have to come back. Um, give it a second coat. But that's we okay. That, yeah, we glazed it. Yeah, we glazed it. Now this coming down here, this mountain here, it it falls away into um, grass, really grass area. And we did the grass yesterday with the olive green because it's bright. But if we're going to use the olive green today, we're going to need to. Um, grayed out a little bit that's just it's too bright a color for the distance that we're looking at it so that literally is a gray through the olive green and I think that's uh, now become a suitable color for us so 
but try not to make it you know definite line this is where the top stops this is where this starts because that's not kind of how things work oh yeah I remember now we had problems with the opacity of that green didn't we um, I had to add some white to it didn't I to get it to uh, be a bit more opaque I don't know where you are in the UK or indeed the world but I can tell you that here in the UK it is so thundery so stormy I mean we haven't had a storm yet but it really feels like one's, uh, one's on its way I can't paint over that because the underneath layer is still wet so it's not letting me um, but in the meantime I can put these rocks in and they're that purpley grey colour this colour in fact and they come down almost like a valley really I like some of that on that top part as well make it look a little bit more like a rock yeah that's good um i'm just gonna dry that for a sec uh right that should be dry now so i'll just go back into this it should be dry because the paint on my palette's blooming dry. That's ridiculous. It's like 10 seconds. Okay, so you can see a little tiny bit of that pink coming through, which I'm really not fussed about. I like it. Now, as I was saying to you, this mountain is in the shadow um, and it comes down pretty much to there in the shadow and then we begin to get a bit of lightness. So... I need darker colours. Um, so this is the purple that I mixed with black. Here, yeah, it's it's too dark in in hue. Um, and I'm just going to add a bit of grey to that. And so she's in the Midlands in Staffordshire, and there's supposed to be a storm coming. Ah. Because she's got a bit of an headache from the pressure. Oh God. Whether that's the storm or watching you, I'm not sure. <laughs> Could be either. Uh, right, so where are we going? This is uh, this is dark. This is the edge of this here, and it it does go over, but we'll we'll worry about that when we get to there. And this is the edge of this mountain, which we'll mark in with with rocks. So when you're putting rocks in, you're not exactly putting them where they are on the picture you're just giving the impression that this is rocks this area here is taken up with rocks i'm not exactly sure what's going on here it doesn't look like my picture okay so all the way down here are these rocks and I'm putting them in in grey and stippling in, them in with the pointy at the toe end of um, my quarter inch angle shader. I mean the, the Lake District was carved out during um, the last ice age that we had. George P says hi. Hi George P. <laughs> nice to see you. And this really is just rocks, rock, rock, rock. But we'll give them some definition in a minute. We're just putting some just kind of rocks in to start with. Okay, so the definition comes from a dark and a, and a light. So the dark is going to be a very dark grey. Don't make them black because... 
it just deadens everything. And have a look and see where they are and put you put some details on these rocks. Remember the light's coming from this side, so if you're sh uh, shading them, the shade needs to be on the right hand side. And we'll come back in and we'll put some highlights on them, which will bring them to life a bit. I just need a slightly darker version of that, which I'm imagining ever nearer to black, but it isn't black, so we're okay. That's better. Give some definition in there. If you um, know anyone that you think would be interested in seeing this, I would benefit in any way, even if it's just for a good laugh to see this, um, please share. There is no prize, so I'm free to tell you to share uh, if you want to. I'm not commanding you to do that. <laughs> okay, so that's that's our rocks pretty much in. And from there on down, this is sort of forestry. But we need to get some um, some highlights on those. And the highlights are a very, very light purple. Seems odd, doesn't it? But it's true. Should we reference if you're using, or do you want me to put a reference on? Um, no, it's. A, I don't know. I don't know how well you can see that. Maybe you can see the big one better. Here's our peak with our rock on the top. Here's this other one that's all rocky down here. And then as you come to there, the bottom part is trees. So I'm just in the middle of a of a rocky bit. So as I said, the, um, we need pur a light purple. So I'm going to take a little bit of this purple again, which is straight out of the tube purple. Add quite a lot of um, white to it. And I'm also going to add a little bit of grey because that's just too purple. That's good. That's a good colour there. Really good colour. Look at all that paint on the so that you've got sunshine, sunshine with cloud over cloud cover. Where are you, Susan? I'm not sure where you live actually. Mm. She says the farmers are harvesting 24 hours round the clock to try and beat the rain tomorrow. But she lives in Cambridgeshire. That yeah. sounds like that, doesn't it? It does. It sounds very. Uh... So this is the side that the light's coming in at. So we need to get our our highlights onto this side and make them look sort of rocky texture. That's all we're doing really, just putting texture down. And some stones that clump together and they look larger. Okay, I think we're probably all right. We'll leave that to dry, see what happens. Hello, Susan. And Georgia uh, is wondering how long do you think it'll take to finish? Who knows, Georgia? <laughs> Could still be doing this next year. Um, a week. I'll say a week. I think it's something like a week. Would you think? I would think so. Yeah. Okay, so we've got this thalo green out. On its own, that is a really, I'll call it a rude colour. It's in your face. It's not, I don't like it. So I need to doctor it in some way. So that's grey in through it. That's not enough. Let's add a little bit of black in through it. A little bit more. Yeah, we're kind of getting more to it, I think. I think I'll go with that because ultimately I feel that I'm going to have to put a blue glaze over this as we did with the other one.
and there's pretty much it's very dark here it's, it's in the the shadow it's in the shadow lands so this is just pretty much what isn't covered by the by the rocks but you can use this to break up your rocks as well if you think you've got your rocks a bit too uniform or they're not sitting right with you somehow you can dab into this and break your break your rocks up Susan Kirkwood says she's in Cambridgeshire ah I used to live in Cambridgeshire uh, I used to live in Ramsey Yeah, I mean, this is, it's too bright a green. Um, it's going to need to be knocked back. But that's fine, because I don't have a problem knocking it back with that blue glaze. I, I like it. I like the effect that you get from it. But that's that's fine. You can see that's rocked, I think, can't you? Can you see that's rocked, Mr. Fix it? No? You believe so? You believe you can, <laughs> or you can. I get the impression of rocks. Well, that's all we're after, isn't it? That's what we're after. The impression of. It's too far away for us to tell much about it. So then I've got a sort of lighter, a lighter bit coming down here, and then beneath that is all the, all the green. So I'm wondering what would happen if I mixed olive green with that. Yeah, all right, you get a sort of funny colour. Denise Eddington says hi. Hi, Denise. Thank you for joining me. Thank you all for joining me. I know you must have better things to do. So I appreciate it, really do. So this path, oh, it's not a, it might be a path, I don't know. But it sort of comes, what is going on here anyway? Is that right? I just wonder if I've got this completely wrong. Is that that bit there? No. Well, we'll carry on. If it's wrong, it's wrong. We'll just make it up as we go along. But I think I'm all right. So this sort of comes... I'm putting this in underneath, this green in underneath. But the, the thing itself is a kind of purpley colour. But I just want to draw a bit of distinction there between what's above and this part here. So I'm going to get some some purple, some dark, dark purple. Everything's drying up today. Yesterday, nothing would dry because it was so humid. And today, everything, that's fine. That's a good colour. So I'm just going to go over this with this purple hue. And again, I'm trying not to make it exactly. I don't want. That's fine. I'm getting a bit of the pink coming through, and I like that um, a lot. Susan says she's in Ramsey next weekend at the RAF 1940s weekend celebration. Ah, right. Oh, well, I hope you have a nice time. I think it must be about 20 years since I left Ramsey, is it? Yeah, it must yeah, be. Must be. Right, so now we're into this foliage down the bottom. I'm actually going to have to have a really good look and sort out where I am in this. I've got lost in my painting, people. Lost. And it's very easy to get lost. So I want some of this. I'm just going to add, I'm going to add a little bit of red to it, actually, just to desaturate it a bit. Is that right? Or is that one that one? No, that one's the fore foreground. Yes. Yeah, no, we're doing all right. Yes. Phew. <laughs> it's just a bit of a, just a, bit of a headland, headland yeah. But that will come in when I do the front, I think. Yeah. The four, four-ish ground, mid-ground, whatever it is. Right, so here's my, my green, my thalo, 
the green, which I don't like, and I'm adding a little bit of red to it. Look how strong that colour is. It just doesn't want to give it up. It is a very strong colour. So let's add a bit more. Yeah, okay. So now we're using up the green and we're left with a more bluey colour. Um, that's okay. That's fine. I can I can work with that and we'll put a glaze over it when we're, when we're done. So this these trees come down here. So don't make them into trees because we can't we can't see that that's what they are. Um, it's very transparent. This I mean red's transparent, but obviously so is stale or green. This is a there's a sort of promontory or headland coming out into the water which I'm going to ignore for the time being. Right, so that's kind of the first underneath coat of that. Just going to go up onto that, onto there a little bit more. Anywhere where you can get texture is good. Okay, so just dry that off. Into there with a slightly different, a slightly different shade. I'm going to add some grey to this and see what happens. I can't, words fail me on how much I dislike this colour. But it's the right colour, so it's got to go. So I've added some grey, it's kind of lightened it up, deadened it down a little bit. That's that's fine, I'm happy with that. So let's go back into here and add some, just some texture. We're just adding texture. That's all we're doing. Because when you look at it, there is texture there. We know, because we're brainy, that that's trees. But really, there's, there's nothing here to... No tree shapes at all. Okay, I'm just going to go working back into this a, a little for a little minute and then I'm going to come back to that and put some real darks in it. So I just like the idea of putting a little bit of white into those rocks. Um, which remember when we come back and put the blue glaze on they'll, they'll take up that sort of hue. So I'm, I'm not going to go mad here, just a little... F I'm going to leave the, the purple as much as I can as well. Um, because I like that, but I just want to highlight some of these. I think they'll look better. I think they'll look better highlighted. But as I say, I do like that purple as well, so I'm trying not to um, swamp it out. Another more white. Quite a rocky hillside, this, which were all left behind by glaciers um, during the ice age. The glaciers came, great big ice sheets moving down through, well, they carved themselves these big, what they call U shaped valleys. And on the bottom edge, they picked up a lot of rocks and deposited a lot of rocks. So that's why you get these sort of mountainous, craggy hillsides, which are full of interest. Right, so now we want a, um, perhaps a darker colour in there just with that um, phthalo green. 
I'm just going to pick up a little bit of black, mix it in with that phthalo, and just give this part here some texture so it kind of looks alive. So it's just very much one, all one colour at the moment. I mean, unless you are going to be selling this picture as crummock water, um, which I'm not going to be, but you might, then uh, do what feels right to you, you know, on the picture. You don't have to adhere really, really closely. I think that's beginning to look a little bit better with these, this sort of um, dark shading on. There's always this moment when you do actually it's when you're doing any art piece at all and you reach a stage and think oh my goodness me this is just awful <laughs> work through it just you know keep working through it you'll be fine it'll, it'll all come clean in the wash um it's just a stage it's just a stage that they go through i think it's just to sort of torment us panic us Are you looking for Mr. Victor? Um, nothing in particular. Okay. Just mooching. Okay. So I quite like this sort of um, olive, olive green that we've got going on at the top that's been somewhat swamped. Oh, okay, Georgia. Thank you. Thanks for joining in. Have a nice rest of your day. So because I like that, I'm just going to add a little bit to it. I don't want this to get too light, though, because bear in mind, this is the dark side of the moon. Pink Floyd? Yeah. <laughs> so I'm just adding a bit in between some of these rocks that we've got. I quite like that impression there. Just have to keep working at this, really. I don't want it to come all the way down, but I do want it to meld with that uh, thalo. Yeah, have faith that it will come right. I mean, sometimes it doesn't, you know what I'm saying? It just doesn't, and they end up on the back of the fire. And if that happens to you, don't curl up in a huddle on your chair and think that you can't paint. Happens to everybody. It it just does. So and some days are very different to other days. Some days you can paint, not really think about what you're doing, and it turns out wonderfully. Other days it just doesn't. <laughs> right, okay, so that's that. I do actually think I need some lightness in the bottom here. I don't know whether that uh, olive green is the right colour to do it with. Yeah, it might be actually. Let's try it. It's just a little bit along the bottom. And then after that, I'm going to make a glaze and um, glaze it out, and then we'll see where we're, see where we're at then. Right, okay. Oops. It's a big sort of stripe of black down the middle. Dark green. Right, okay, I think that's not too bad. It looks like a rocky hillside. So let's talk about glaze then. Uh, yesterday I was saying to you, if you haven't got any glaze, this is mine, it's uh, De La Roni glaze medium. If you haven't got any glaze medium, don't panic. Don't think you can't do this. Just... Well, unless it's for a, for sale or you're going to donate it to a museum, something like that, just add water to your paint. Thin it down. Thin it right down, um, which is all this does, really. Um, and I've been caught out, and many of you have seen me being caught out, by not adding 
by adding too much paint to the glaze and then pretty much all you've got is, a, is another paint. So make sure you've got plenty glaze and not very much colour and you can always go back again and do another glaze but once it's on there, it's on there so you know it's too late. I will say however that I think I need to differentiate this mountain from the other because you can't tell where it starts and the other stops. So I'm going to have to do a little bit of furcling around. Furcling that was people it wasn't a rude word. Um, I'm going to go into the I'm going to mix some purple and a little bit of black. A bit more purple on that. Pick up a bit of this grey purple. Mm, that might have lightened it a bit too much. Let's just see what I can add down here just to make it stand out. Don't just draw an outline around it, please. Because uh, it won't look right. Look like you've been painting by numbers. And actually, they do have some lovely painting by numbers sets. I've seen them when I've been in Hobbycraft. I always get tempted to buy them, actually. They're so nice. Right, so that just that little bit of purple there has really made that mountain stand, stand out, come forward. Exactly what we wanted it to do, and I think there are little bits of purple actually down into there. Is anybody joining us on our journey? Yes, there are. Oh. There's currently 12 people viewing. Thank you, 12 um, people. Come to me, I'm still streaming because I seem to have frozen on there, but I don't know whether I'm oh, frozen right. to other people or it's just on there again. Right, well, I'll carry on regardless. <laughs> Until somebody says, <laughs> Until somebody says whoa. <laughs> um, I'm using this purple actually on, on quite a lot of this mountain because remember I said to you that it's in the the lee side of the sun it's not really getting any sun and then i you know pretty much disregarded what i told you and carried on giving it plenty light um so i'm just kind of tapping over it giving it a bit of texture and darkening it down a bit um which is that's good it, it needed that i think Karen said uh, you said you'd explain that movement you do with your brush when collecting the paint. Ah, yes, I will explain that to you right this second. Good, well remembered. You actually go to the top of the class for people who listen to what I say. Award yourself a curly whirly girl. Um, yeah, I will explain that right this second. Well, might be this minute, actually, rather more than this second. Let's put some purple in amongst that. Um, Halo green. That looks better. Might have actually got there now in the end. I like the olive green coming through it. I like the darker colour and I particularly like this. It's it's giving us a nice nice look, bearing in mind as I say it's on the dark side. Right, okay, that movement that I um, just... Carol says she just spied the Raggedy Ann doll. Ah, uh, that's not Raggedy Ann, that's Raggedy Ann's sister. <laughs> <laughs> and, and Raggedy Ann's sister is going to be um, painted very soon. And I've actually got Raggedy Ann's other sister as well. A niece. <laughs> <laughs> um, who I am going to be painting too. I'm going to do a nice little series of Raggedy Ann's. Yeah, this one as well. Hello. So that's Raggedy Ann 3. Um, so yeah, we're getting a whole family together of uh, Raggedy Ann's. 
I do actually really love ragdolls. Okay, so I'm I'm happy to leave that at the moment and we'll glaze it over. I'll show you um, what I was talking about, about loading your, your brush with paint. It only it only really applies to round brushes. Any ones that are flat or angled or whatever, uh, you don't need to do this with it. It wouldn't work. But this is a little round brush. Dip it in the water. Make sure you've still got plenty of water on it. I mean, this isn't dripping, but it's full of water. And then you go to whatever colour. Let's go to this green here. And you mix a puddle of it. You mix that water that's on the brush into that puddle of paint. So you've... Um, What do you call it when you diluted? You've <laughs> diluted your paint. And then when when you've got a nice puddle like that, swirl your brush around it and then roll it. Roll it in your fingers in the paint. Keep rolling, keep rolling, keep rolling, and then start to lift it off. Rolling all the time. And when you get to 45-ish degrees, pull it off away from the paint, and you'll have a brush that's laden with your colour but also to a point. Probably see it better there. So this brush has got as much paint on it as it possibly can because um, it's been rolled in it and then rolled off to a point so you can still get a really nice, nice line with it. I'm not doing very well today, but you can still get a nice line with it. So that's the mystery of how you load um, round brushes. Can I also say to you guys that when you wash round brushes, uh, what I do is I rinse them under um, not a stone cold tap but certainly not hot water because hot water sets the acrylic and then you've got no chance of getting it off. So tepid sort of water, uh, I just rinse, swirl them around and then I've got one of those hand wash soap dispensers by the side of the sink and I've got it full of uh, fairy liquid or dawn washing soap or whatever, whatever you wash your dishes in. And I put a, a bit of fairy liquid into my palm, I take my brush and I swirl it round and round and round and round and round. And you can tell when you first do that, I mean the fairy liquid I'm using at the minute is green, which doesn't help if you're washing green brushes out. But you'll be able to see the colour come off and keep doing it until there is no colour left coming out. And then rinse it, rinse the fairy liquid out of it. And then roll your brush in your hand, as I've just shown you now, and put it to dry. So as you're putting it to dry with a point on it. So when you, when you next need it, it's a good pointy round brush. Um, and always dry your brushes horizontally. If you dry them like that, the water runs up into this, the ferrule and eventually your bristles will come loose. Uh, it's not good for your brush. So dry them like that. Then when they're, they're dry, you can store them any way you like. Um, but that's the story of that. Jessica Kimberly says, looking fab, love seeing how other artists work. Well, I'd like to see how you work, Jessica. Please, please post some of your work on... Um, well, either this group or the Miss Acrylic Paint a lot. It's not called that anymore. Miss Paint a lot's art group, which is a kind of sister. This is there's a page and there's a group, so you can post in the group. And I'd really love to see uh, the work that you're doing. Um, Kant Miss is brilliant. Thank you. Good. Jackie Matt, which says wow. Well, wow. <laughs> uh, right. So we're about to. Uh, talk about glazers. So I've got a heck of a lot of glaze, comparatively speaking, a lot of glaze out there because I'm only doing this little mountain. And I'm just going to add a tiny bit of blue to it. Paula says you're always nagging her about the brushes. I am always <laughs> nagging her about her brushes, yeah. I am. Because, you know, she doesn't look after them. She could get loads more wear out of them if she just looked after them. Actually, she's not so bad of late. I think I've nagged her into submission. I threatened to go around there. I threatened to send the, the brush police. Right, so I've made that up. It's looking a bit blue to me, but I'm hoping that it'll be okay. So I'm just going to use a tiny bit. I mean, I've made up enough for a whole picture, but 
this is dry. So let's just go over this and just check that we haven't. No, that's a little bit. We don't want it. We want it blue, um, but we don't want too much blue. Just want to move it into the background. It's going to take a heck of a lot of time if I just get one little bit left. I'm going to have to book my ideas up a bit and just crack on one day. So this just shunts this straight away, straight back into the background. And the bits that we painted titanium white on the rocks are really blue. But that's fine because that's how we we read them. Our brain tells us they're white, but we read it as as blue. So there we are, that's that mountain done. I'm gonna to have to take a little while and work out exactly what is going on with my picture. So that is that. So down below that I've got this, but up above it, which must be this one. Uh, what's going on here? Have I painted that for that? No, we've just painted that one. Mm -hmm. And this hump here is that there. All oh, right, okay. So you've painted that portion there. Oh, right. Okay. I'm not so sure I like that V-shaped valley there. It's a bit too V-shaped for my liking. I'm just going to have a little, little blot out of things here. See how green this looks now, now that we've got our um, the blue, blue on. So I'm going to leave that to dry and then I'm going to just put some um, blue glazing over the top, honestly. Oh, goodness sake, woman. Right, so this one here then is this one here. <laughs> it's this one here, which I think I painted for that one there, but never mind. As I said, unless you're giving it to a museum or you're selling it as crummock water, we'll be fine. And that's dark on the top. Let's go for this again. I think it might be quite similar to the last one because I think I have, um, I'll hold my hands up. I think I've mucked it up a bit. But you know. They're all blinking lakeside mountains, for heaven's sake. They're all pretty similar. <laughs> I think you're right. I think you just think you're wrong. Oh, really? That would be a first. <laughs> I usually always think I'm right, <laughs> and then I'm wrong. That's true. <laughs> bit of a red letter day, really. It certainly is. So there's there's a there's a bit of green that comes down here uh, in thunder distance. And I'm getting some nice bits of pink showing through, which is quite nice. Um, and it goes off along here. Oh, so you never thought about drying horizontally. Yeah, it's uh, it's quite important really because you'll shorten the length of your brushes if you don't because the bristles will drop out and it's not such a good brush really. Now I need a dark, a dark, dark colour. I'm, I'm actually going to break open this dioxazine purple which is really um, highly pigmented so be careful, try not to get it on your clothes or anything. It has really high tinting power. It's in series nine. Isn't it? it is a. I don't know what series it is. Where does it tell you what series it is? Series six. Yeah, sorry. Series six. The, all the professional art colours come in uh, in series. One being the titanium white, um, buff titanium. Maybe that's all. And then they go through. And some go up to series 13, don't they? And basically, the higher the series number, the more money they want from you because the pigments are more expensive. So this is series six. So I don't know how much it cost, 15 quid or something. Um, you know, this sort of painting, it, any any actual painting. What did, what did I mix up now? Oh, no, I just put my diox out, haven't I? Um, painting, art. Making art is expensive. 
and I haven't got any grey left. Let's put some of that green through it and see what happens to it. Let's go with that for this. So it comes up here and it's a bit of a lighter colour. Jessica is asking about the choice of pink paper. Does it change the hues of the paint when applied? Yes, it does a bit actually. Um, I can see on here. Uh, where are we? There. On this mountain that I did yesterday, now it's dry. You can see the pink just hinting through it. Um, and and that's lovely. I like that. I want I want to maintain that if I can. But the main reason that I did it was all this foreground that looks it's weeds. It's kind of scrubby stuff. I don't want that. The heather was just beginning to come out, and I'm going to put heather on that section. And I know that this will really help when I come to do that. The other thing is, there's a lot of greens. Complementary of green is red, so I've used pink um, just to help me on my on my merry way. It warms up the palette, doesn't it? It warms it up, yeah. It certainly does. And from a technical point of view, it makes it easier for me to get it right on the camera. Yeah. Than glaring white. Gives me something to work with. Well, look what you've got to work with. <laughs> oh, dear. We've done next to nothing today now where I was just a photo. I'm really sorry. No, uh, tomorrow I will not gas and gab. I really won't. Um, let's just dry that quickly, put some green in it so we look like we've actually got somewhere. Before it goes, well, I'm just going to knock those back a bit. They're just all too prominent I think, particularly, particularly now I've painted them quite a bluey colour. I'll just get a little bit more glazing medium out and I'm going to do them in olive green I think. Just knock it back. You could if you wanted to use um, zinc white. It's a transparent white and it will knock it right back. Um, but I, I kind of want to use that olive green I think. It's it's quite a deadening colour. Got this from Jackson's and it's really I think it's a muddy colour to start with. I've got a little bit out already. Um, I mean I particularly love olive green, but I do find that just a bit a bit on the muddy side. It doesn't play nice with with other paints. It um, seems to bring its mud with it. So let's give that a try on <clears throat> that one. See where that gets us. Oh, where by the looks. Yeah, it is. That's better. So I'm, I'm not going to cover over all that bottom area because I quite like it the way it is. But I am going to just go. I mean, don't stop putting the glaze on in a definite line um, because it will be obvious then. Making art like this takes time and it takes doubly as long when you're doing a live of it. It really does. I mean, it doesn't kind of take me this long when I'm on my own, just whistling along doing things. Um, but when you're chattering away like I tend to do, um, you don't get a whole heck of a lot done, really. I think that's better. I, I like that. I like that better. Excellent. So this is uh, what we've moved on to, and I'm just going to pick some green up and put it on top of that. Just says, thank you, she never thought of using the, the pink. Yeah, it's sometimes, depending on what you do, a yellow ochre one is good as well. Um, you know, bearing in mind that uh, 
yellow is a compliment, or the ochre really is a complement of blue. So if you're doing a seascape or um, a lot of sky or whatever, you might benefit from from a yellow ochre background. Carol says you need to chat a little well, I do. I mean, you are my social life, guys. <laughs> you are it. So, yes, I do need to chatter with you. And I love it. I love that you're there. Um, right, OK, well, I'm not too dissatisfied with that. I, I, I quite like that, actually. Um, Vicky Howard's joined and says, hello, I'm new. Hello, Vicky. Well, I hope that soon you'll share, you'll feel confident enough to share some of your work with us. Maybe that you're already an absolute stunning artist. Uh, I hope you are. We like to see inspirational pieces in our group. Um, pop on over to Miss Paint Miss Paintalot's art group and join us in there and you'll see what we get up to. Nothing to we don't do anything mad. Um, and sometimes it goes quiet and I don't know why. I just think some of you haven't you're not you're not posting what you do. Please post it. So moving down here, down to this part here, is it's kind of a, a go anywhere green, and this sap green here is exactly what that is. We've almost, but not quite, left the thalo green behind. So I'm just going to take a tiny bit of that thalo green, which has gone off set, um, and this is going to be the last thing that I do today, because. It's an hour. Oh my God, I've made a spearmint colour. That's hideous. It's just hideous. Wow, I'm going to have to put some red in that double quick. Grey that down. Did you all, are you all aware of greying down uh, opposites, you know, opposite colours on the colour wheel to get a, to get a grey brown? Um, it's a it's a good trick when you when you want something in the family of but not desaturated in color let's say so let's just put this in here comes down the side of the that's gone past I know I can't believe it we haven't done anything. It's quite ridiculous. Away. It's quite ridiculous though, isn't it? How quickly time goes when you're having fun with your friends. It's all good. Have you not got any friends? No. <laughs> <laughs> you can have some, you can share mine. I bet Carol will be your friend. She strikes me as being friendly. I bet Susan would be your friend too. Right, so we're beginning to make inroads into this section here. That's the side section. This one got off very lightly, actually, and I may well go back and visit it and put some rocks in him and whatever. But for the time being, he's okay. I need to I need to get cracking, otherwise we're never going to finish this blooming thing. Do you want me to carry on on my own for for an hour on occasions, um, guys, or do you really want to see everything? If you want to see everything, I'm fine with that. Um, but if it's boring, then I can crack on in little bits. Nobody's answered because nobody wants to say, oh God, just do it, woman. <laughs> Says she's my friend. Oh, you've got a friend. <laughs> she's the fifth person you've got on YouTube, on Facebook. I know. Yeah. And she only messaged you to find out if I was alright. <laughs> You're, <in, laughs> yeah. You're in rare, uh, rarefied position there, Paula. Right, so I've just added a bit of olive green to that colour that we've put along there because as it comes down, this the light hits it. So I just wanted a lighter colour. But I think I'm going to have to add 
touch of white to that um, and a bit more oh that's what I'll open the this is a fluid acrylic it's a golden one as well it's called green gold and it's it's exactly the same color and everything it's just it's liquid the consensus is to carry on definitely not boring oh thank you thank you very much so I've added a little bit of that green gold to it, tiny little bit of white. My brush is just absolutely rammed with paint. And I'm going to introduce this really quite light colour here, which is lovely. Something light. Hello, oh, Solly. Nice of you to join us. I appreciate my style is not your style, but I wouldn't do if we were all the same, would it? Well, I think once I put this in, I shall leave it until tomorrow. Um, it's very transparent, isn't it? It's transparent as yeah. hell. Billio. Yeah, it's as transparent as Billio. Uh, what else have we got? Where could I put this? That's Dark Rocks. Just along this, the top here, however, has got a bright strike to it. So I shall put that in while I've got that colour on the go. Um, don't forget, you can make it thicker than you need to. There, for example, I just want to make a statement. I don't want to forget that that's where the light is. So make it as thick as you want to, because then when you come back and you paint, you can just paint up to it and leave yourself a really narrow little line. That's a good tip for painting uh, really fine lines. The other, another tip is have a little brush. You're not going to paint fine lines with a half inch brush. Make it a placeholder. It's, it's a good, placeholder. It's yeah, it's exactly that. And it's actually light up into here. So um, it's obviously going to need more than one coat, more than two or three by the looks of it. But that is literally what it is. It's a placeholder. Um, there is another little strike of it down here. And I'm quite happy to get this in because uh, I've mixed it. I've used it. So I might as well. Now behind here is this, this is the tree. So we're not sure really. I can see that up to there, there's still water, but I'm not sure what, what's going on here. So, you know, let's just fiddle about, put something in. Remind us we need to fill that, fill that up with something. Um, negative yourself. <laughs> this is... You're brilliant and I've definitely brightened my light since I found you. That is so sweet of you to say so, and it means an awful lot. I can't tell it. I'm going to have to change the subject because I'm going to cry. So, um, right. I'm going to leave it at that. Shall I leave it or shall I just put those trees? I'm just going to put the trees in. Sorry, guys. So this is your style is very impressive with all the camera angles. Get Theo on the job, Sully. Get him on the job. Not on the that job, heaven's sake. Um, it's OBS. Paula will tell you about it. She's got OBS. Um, so I'm looking. I'm casting about for this colour that I used for the trees, which I know is this phthalo colour, and I oh, I know that I dislike it. So I'm, I want it. I want it darkened first, because where the trees begin, which is where this stops, that is quite a dark line that marks the bottom of those trees and we're getting closer now this is get, this is coming closer to us so we're seeing a little bit more detail we're not seeing that these have got uh, branches and leaves and whatever but we're seeing that they are trees so we'll put that darkness in at the bottom which all trees have when you look at trees if they're in a group you always get this darkness in in at the bottom that's a good thing to, to do. So now we'll lighten up some of that phthalo green or some of that mix that we've just used um, and put our... Now that's just a ridiculous colour. <laughs> it's just ridiculous. Um, I'm going to have to add some black into that. 
Right, okay, that's fine. It's going to be playing up a bit there. I think the video stopped, but I think oh. it's going again now. Okay. What I would say to you is um, some colours have got immense tinting powers. And by that, I mean they will they will be the dominant one. They'll win the argument. And we've got one here today. And I did, must say, I didn't realise just quite how strong it is. This thalo green, it's the Sennelier uh, abstract thalo green. I've got a golden version of it as well. But it is, it's a bully. It's a real bully. And the other one we've got that tints a lot is the Diox. But I, I tell you, I think the... Um, Thalo knocks that into a cocked hat, to be honest. So this is just our trees. We do as we did before. We'll put them in as a solid sort of mass and then go back in and um, put some details on them. Don't know why I hesitated there. So by the time we come back, all this should be dry. Well, it definitely will be. It's got 24 hours and uh, and raring to go. Just going to dry that quickly. I mean, this now is beginning to look like a hillside, I think. What do you think, Mr. Mr. Fixer? It is indeed. Yeah. Cumber your its best. Still not too convinced of that, but... You know, sometimes when you get other things in around it, it sets it in its place. So I'm not for changing anything too dramatically at the moment. That's dry. Let's just go uh, over that and that's color. And that'll save us a job tomorrow. Yeah, Sally, if, you, if you're still with us, it's a system called OBS. Um, and it, it's, well, I'm saying to you, it's excellent. I haven't got a clue. I don't know how, how the wretched thing works. But Mr. Fixit, my trusty partner, um, sorted it out for us. We've got, one, two, we've got three cameras. Uh, we've got the palette cam, uh, this cam, and the face cam. Uh, I've got an additional microphone and some light. I think that's it anyway. Um, this is Rocky. Rocky. Do -do -do, do -do -do. I am the tiger. <laughs> it's me. Uh, not that Rocky, incidentally, after all that. It's rocks. So this is this grey greyed out purple that I'm liking very much for my rocks. It's quite dark. And they they are here. And they need definition on them. But if we get them in today, we can come along tomorrow and quickly, quickly, quickly put definition on everything. So she can't get this on an iPhone. You know, you need to be running it through either a Mac or a PC. Did you catch that, Solly? Either a Mac or a PC. I think Paula found another one that was... Didn't she find something else? Uh, there's one called Streamlabs OBS. Right. But it's effectively the same thing, really. There's no real difference. If you can use right. one, you can use the other. But can you stream that on a phone, the other one that you're talking about? You have to run the program on a PC. Oh, uh, right, Mac. okay. You can use the iPhone as, as a camera. As a camera. Yeah. And as a microphone, but you, yeah. you have to run it in something else. We for quite a while we used our iPhone camera, um, iPhone as our microphone, but actually it didn't really work long term. Um, it was a bit. I tend to hold my head down, obviously when I'm painting, and I mumble, and it just wasn't picking it up. And people were grumbling that they couldn't really make out what I was saying. Uh, which fair enough. Um, so we we bought an external microphone. And you know we've got external cameras and whatever. So we are getting these first coats on here. Um I'll just give this another coat of this greeny 
greeny gold in there. And then we can come back tomorrow and do a bit more. People say, oh, does OBS now work on the Mac? And the answer is yes, because that's what yeah. I'm on today. Yeah, definitely works on a Mac. That's all we've got. Oh, I tell a lie, we have got a... We've got an old... Um, it's not that old, actually. No, we've got a laptop. Laptop. But my, what, I'm, what I've got my picture on today, what my guide is uh, a MacBook. We've got an iPad. We've, we're just Mac people, really. Once you go Mac, you'll never go back. Let's make that up. It's quite good, isn't it? It's true, though. <laughs> right, that's it. I'm putting my brush down. Um, we haven't achieved a whole hell of a lot today, really, have we? But I've thoroughly enjoyed chatting to you. You've made my Sunday. It's been a laugh. <laughs> so thanks very much for joining me. I'll see you tomorrow at four o'clock. If you can't catch it, obviously you're not going to miss a whole heck of a lot. And you can catch up on replay. Eventually, all of this will get uploaded to YouTube. So it will be there for uh, forever. Um, so you can watch it on there either if you wanted to. But hopefully I'll see some of you back at four tomorrow. You Thanks a lot, guys. Zoom oh, out a little and he's zooming get, out. Get the... Oh, yeah. It's beginning to come together. I mean, all of this is kind of underneath stuff. Um, we just need a bit of detail on it. And then, you know, we're moving around, guys. We're moving around. Okay, see you tomorrow, I hope. Thank you very, very much. Please share if you feel you can. Um, or if you want to, I would really appreciate that. See you tomorrow. Bye.